Hello students and welcome to my channel Maths Hub. So today in this video, I'll tell you about the solutions of second and higher order differential equations, particularly the particular integral for the fourth case. So in the previous two videos, we have discussed about the three cases of particular integral. So we'll quickly revise what were those three cases. So the first thing that we did in particular integral was that if we are left with 1 by d times q, it is always equal to integration of q dx. Then the first case that we have done is whenever we have exponential term on our right hand side, then we replace x with d with e, right? And if the case fails, that means if the denominator term is becoming 0, then we will multiply the numerator with x and we will take the derivative of the denominator and we will again replace d by a and the method will continue, right? Then the second case was when we deal with trigonometric functions like sin ax plus b or cos ax plus b. So in this case, we will be replacing d square with minus a square again provided the denominator is not becoming zero. If the denominator becomes zero, then again, it's a case failure and we have to deal it by the same method. So we'll multiply with x in the numerator and we will take the derivative of the denominator, right? Then the third case that we discussed was that whenever we have sine hyperbolic ax plus b function or cos hyperbolic ax plus b function. So in that case, we replace d square with plus a square, right? And the same continues for case failure. So now let us deal with the fourth case in this video and the fourth case says that if we have some powers of x, so here you can see that our right hand side function is a power of x, right? So in that case, what we will do, we will take this fd term in the numerator, so it will become fd raised to power minus 1 into x raised to power m and we will try to expand fd in ascending powers of d. So what we are going to do, suppose we have a term here, say d squared plus 2, d plus 1. So we are going to take out the highest power of d common from the terms. And then whatever terms we are left with, that will be arranged in the ascending powers. And then with the help of the binomial expansion, we can expand this term and we can retain the terms till we want x raised to power m, right? So how to retain it, I'll let you know in the example. So now for this, we will be requiring the binomial and by the binomial, if we recap, it is 1 plus x raised to power n. So we have the terms as 1 plus n into x plus n into n minus 1 by 2 factorial into x square plus n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 divided by 3 factorial x cube and the terms continue like this, right? So... If we have an expansion, say 1 plus d raised to power minus 1, so it will become 1 minus d. So here x is d and n is minus 1. So we'll get 1 minus d plus d square by 2. Uh, no, 2 will also get cancelled when we replace n with minus 1. So the next term is minus d cube and expansion continues like this. So every alternative term is plus minus, right? And similarly, one more expansion that you should be requiring and you should understand this. So instead of plus here, we will take a minus sign, 1 minus d raised to power minus 1. So you will get similar terms, but the entire expression will become plus. It will be positive term. So it will be 1 plus d plus d squared plus d cube plus so on. So in this expansion, you can just replace n with minus 1 and d with x with minus d. So you'll find that you get this expression, right? So these are the frequent terms that we will be requiring in the question, right? Otherwise, remember the general term and you can put any value. Suppose we have n as 2, so you can replace n with 2, right? So now let us try to solve the next question with the help of this concept. So we need to solve d2y by dx squared plus y is equal to e raised to power 2x plus cos hyperbolic 2x plus x cube. So since we have to solve it, so that means this solution contains the complementary solution and the particular integral. So let's quickly calculate the complementary solution. So you'll get the auxiliary equation as 
d square plus 1 is equal to 0. So I'm not explaining how we are going to get d square plus 1. So I'm leaving this as an exercise. So we convert this into an algebraic expression. m square plus 1 is equal to 0. So m square is equal to minus 1. So m comes out to be plus minus iota. So from here, the complementary solution is e raised to power 0x. So that is 1. So we will get c1 cos x plus c2 sin x. Right. Now let us focus on the particular integral in this question. So now for the particular integral, what we are going to write, pi or we can write it as yp is equal to. So we know that it is 1 by fd and fd is d squared plus 1. And we have here e raised to power 2x plus cos hyperbolic 2x plus x cube. Right. So since there are three terms, so let us split the terms. So we have 1 over d square plus 1 e raised to power 2x plus 1 upon d square plus 1 cos hyperbolic 2x. And then we have 1 upon d square plus 1 x cube. Right. Now in this, you will be seeing, I'm not explaining the first and the second case because you must be knowing it. If, when it is e raised to power 2x, we know that we replace d with 2. So when you replace d with 2, the term will become 2 square plus 1. So it is basically e raised to power 2x divided by 2 square is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5, right? In the next case, we have cos hyperbolic function. So we know that we replace d square with 2 square. So the next term will become 1 upon 2 square is again 4, 4 plus 1 is 5. So we get 1 by 5 cos hyperbolic 2x. Now we need to concentrate on this term, the rule that we have learned in this video, right? So according to that, what you can write, you can expand it or you can arrange the terms in ascending orders of d. So when you arrange it in the ascending orders of d, we can write this term as 1 upon 1 plus d square into x to the power 3. Let us take this sum. Let's, I'm just concentrating on this term. So we can calculate, uh, we can take the term on the numerator and this will become 1 plus d square raised to power minus 1 into x cube. Right? So now when we apply the binomial, the first term is 1. Now here x is d square and n is minus 1. So the next term is n into x. So when you take n into x, you will get d square. Then the next term, it is n into n minus 1. So minus 1 into minus 2. So 2 and 2 will get cancelled. And you will get the term as d to the power 4. Then the next term you can check will get d6, then d8 and so on, right? Now the question is that till which term I should expand, right? So you'll get to know the question, the answer right now. When you open up the brackets, what will you find? 1 into x cube will give you x cube. Then we have d square into x cube. Then we have d to the power 4 into x cube then minus d to the power 6 into x cube and so on, right? I'm not writing the rest of the terms. So now you will get to know that why am I not writing the terms. Now what is d square of x cube? d square means the second derivative, right? So let's work out what are the derivatives of x cube. So derivative of x cube is basically 3x square. Then when you take the second derivative, d square of x cube is 6x and then the third derivative is d cube of x cube is 6 and then the fourth derivative d4 of x cube this will be 0. That means the moment this power exceeds the term the exponent the derivatives are becoming 0. So that means whenever you open up the binomial till which terms do you need to expand the terms till the exponent of x right because the higher degrees the higher derivative they will all become zero so from here we will get the second derivative as 6x and the fourth derivative all of them these terms will become zero right so that means this is the particular integral left so what is your answer so your answer turns out to be 
e raised to power 2x by 5 plus cos hyperbolic 2x by 5 plus x cube minus 6x. So what is the final solution? So the general solution y it is the complementary solution and the particular integral. So we get c1 cos x plus c2 sin x plus e raised to power 2x divided by 5 plus cos hyperbolic 2x divided by 5 plus x cube minus 6. So this is my final answer. Right? So I hope you understood this question. So let us apply the concept of the rule again in the next question so that you get through with this rule. So we need to find out the particular integral of the differential equation y triple dash plus 2y double dash plus 4y dash equal to the terms, right? So first of all, let us write. So we just need to calculate the particular integral here. So yp comes out to be 1 by, when you convert this into an auxiliary equation, it will be d cube plus 2d square plus 4d. And on the right hand side, we have x square plus 2x plus 4. So here you can see that the maximum power is 2. So I need to open up the exponential till the second derivative. Third derivative onwards, the things will become 0. Now, how to arrange this in the form of a binomial? So you have seen that when we were writing the binomial expansion, it was 1 plus x raised to power n. That means the first leading term should, have, should be 1. So how to make this 1? What we will do? Let us take the least derivative, the least power out right so the least term here is 4d so let us take it out and let us write down rewrite the terms from the back end so when you take out 4d common and let us write down the terms from the back end we get 1 plus 2d square upon 4d it will be d by 2 plus d cube by 4d so you will get d square by 4 right and you can see that this term acts as your x and we have here x square plus 2x plus 4. So now this is 1 by 4d. Let us take this term in the numerator. We have 1 plus d by 2 plus d square by 4 raised to power minus 1 into x square plus 2x plus 4. Right. So 1 by 4d, the term here is a d. So d can be is simply integration so we'll do it at the later stage let's open up this part first right now when you apply the binomial expansion we get the first term as 1 then the next term will be d by 2 minus d by 2 minus d square by 4 I need to retain till exponent 2 right then the next term is n into n minus 1 by 2 x square that means I have to square up this term when I square up this term, this is a plus b whole square. So I'll get d by 2 whole square. So that is d square by 4. When I square this term, the power will become 4. So I don't require because the derivative will automatically become 0. And then the mixed term, 2 into ab, that is d cube. Again, there is no requirement, right? And the further terms, they will be higher than degree 2. So we stop here and... It is applied on x squared plus 2x plus 4. Let's open up the brackets. So this is 1 by 4d. 1 into the entire term is the same term. x squared plus 2x plus 4. You can see minus d squared by 4 and plus d squared by 4 gets cancelled. And we have d by 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 4. Right? So this is 1 by 4d. Let's work out x squared plus 2x plus 4 minus derivative of x squared is 2x. 2x upon 2 is simply x. Then again a minus sign. Derivative of 2x. Derivative of 2x is 2. 2 by 2 is 1. And derivative of 4 is 0. Right? So now let us rewrite what we are getting. So we have x square 
2x minus x is plus x, 4 minus 1 is 3. So now we know that what is 1 by d times q? The inverter operator, it is q dx, right? So we will apply the same thing here. So it's 1 by d of this. So that means it becomes integration of x squared plus x plus 3 dx, right? And this is nothing but 1 by 4. What is integration of x squared? It is x cubed by 3 plus integration of x is x squared by 2 plus integration of 3 is 3x. So this becomes my final. Right? So I hope now you are able to apply the fourth rule, rule number 4. Right? So I've given you some practice questions, right? So do check your progress and do let me know if you are able to solve these questions. If you are not able to do any of these questions, do know, let me know in the comment section, right? And thank you so much for listening. And if you like the video, do hit the like button. And those of you who have not subscribed my channel, do subscribe my channel to get the latest updated video. Thank you so much.